said, quote, whistleblowers and tipsters should turn over their evidence to local law enforcement. Anyone who provides information that leads to an arrest and final conviction of voter fraud will be paid a minimum of $25,000 and maybe $1 million. Wouldn't you know it, though? Uh, soon after the Texas lieutenant governor threw that chum into the water, he got a bite. The Democratic lieutenant governor in Pennsylvania, John Fetterman, responded, said he had taken on the challenge and he had succeeded and he wanted his money. He dug up an instance of voter fraud right in his home state of Pennsylvania. It was maybe not the kind of voter fraud his Texan counterpart was hoping for, but he did try to collect just the same saying, quote, hey, Lieutenant Governor Patrick, it's your counterpart in Pennsylvania. I'd like to collect your handsome reward for reporting voter, reporting voter fraud. I got a dude in 44th PA who tried to have his dead mom vote for Trump. Lieutenant Governor Fetterman said he was willing to accept his payment from Texas in convenience store gift cards. He said that would work for him. Uh, so far, not a peep from Austin, though. It's fascinating. Joining us now uh, is John Fetterman, the Lieutenant Governor of Pennsylvania. Mr. Fetterman joins us, I am told, from a, a rest stop in Breezewood, PA. Is that true? Right on the, on the, yeah, on the beautiful Pennsylvania Turnpike, yep. What's behind you? It's kind of a super cool shot there. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a, 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 a turnpike uh, mural of all these historical photographs. I thought, you know, it's the best background I could possibly, you know, pull together uh, at, at this point, so... Very historic. <laughs> I appreciate you doing it. I also appreciate that you are a tall guy with long arms, and so not having a tripod for your camera actually also works out fine. Um, yeah, well, let we me just pass the button. Ahead. I'm on my way back home. Yeah. Let me ask you first about um, you and Dan Patrick. Have you actually heard anything from him since you tried to claim the reward? No, my, my dude owes me at least $2 million. Yeah, we had two instances of voter fraud in Pennsylvania that involved Republicans having relatives vote for Donald Trump, one living, one dead. We had a dead mom try to vote uh, in Luzerne County. And then we had a Republican father who voted for Trump in Chester County and then left about half an hour later, he came back wearing sunglasses and he tried to vote for his son who was a Democrat. So, I mean, it, it, this wasn't the best and brightest of, in, but in terms of, you know, Lieutenant Governor Patrick owing me uh, yeah, I mean, it's like I'm still waiting for those $2 million in Sheets gift cards, but uh, so far, uh, the, actually, the, the lieutenant governor did reach out to me on Twitter, and, and then he got dragged all over again for, for not paying up. Well, uh, we'll see if this creates any additional additional pressure. I, for one, would like to see what you do with the money. Um, but let, let me ask you about this the broader issue right now. Uh, Pennsylvania sort of being in the sights of the president, at least by some reporting. President Trump is leaning on members of Republican-controlled legislatures in states that Biden won. We saw him bring these Michigan Republicans to the White House today. CNN is reporting that Pennsylvania is next, that he may ask Republicans from the legislature in your state to come to the White House, too, to, to pressure them. I just have to ask if you know anything about that in the, in the state. I, I'm like, yeah, I'm like, go, dude, go enjoy yourself, man. Have, have fun with it. But it, it's not going to change anything. And, you know, a new wrinkle to all that story is, is that there's actually been a COVID flare up in the Pennsylvania House uh, just recently as today. So I, I don't see that movie having a happy ending for, for the president. So it, it's really not anything that I'm concerned about, nor should any of your viewers be concerned about. And then when you see the quality of the legal representation that he's been able to secure for himself, it's, it's just kind of sad and demented. Is the certification of the vote in Pennsylvania going to go smoothly? Is there any potential bottleneck in the system? Like in Michigan, we're watching this state board where there's two Democrats and two Republicans. The Republicans are really being pressured. If they both went along with the pressure, it would actually throw some kind of wrench in the works there in terms of certification. Is the process vulnerable to that kind of thing in Pennsylvania too? No, I, I don't believe so. Uh, certification is Monday. And uh, the, the, the thing is, is they, the terms expire on November 30th. So if they don't certify the results, they won't technically have a House of Representatives to certify with. They would just have a handful of senators that run on every uh, every four years, and this would be their off uh, election. So there, there's really not anything that can happen. I mean, and you have to also understand too, a lot of these elected officials, you know, have to you know walk that line between like legitimate governance and you know pandering to the the lunatic fringe slash death cult 
uh, part of, of their party as well, too. So so there's there's a little bit of, of that going on as well. But I, I'm confident that, you know, even if they were of that mind uh, frame to do that, you know, there isn't a legal constitutional mechanism for them to even engage in that behavior, quite frankly. But yeah, so if they want to go visit the president, yeah, good luck with that. John Fetterman is the Lieutenant Governor of Pennsylvania. Sir, thank you uh, for being here, uh, particularly uh, from exactly where you are. I'm always uh, happy to talk to you, sir. It's great to have you. All right, thanks for having me on. All right, you know, whenever we hit one of those periods where every sentence about what the president is doing kind of needs to include the word unprecedented, there is one person I always want to turn to. NBC presidential historian Michael Beschloss actually has been painting some